Hi, and welcome to our channel. If this is your first time here, I'm Val, and along with my husband Josh and our three cats, we live, work, and travel full-time in our 30-foot Airstream. This week, we're coming to you from the beautiful San Isabel National Forest outside of Buena Vista, Colorado, and we're dry camping or boondocking same thing and we thought this would be a great opportunity to share with you what we've learned over the last year traveling 25,000 miles across the country and sleeping in 19 different states about how to make your dry camping feel a little bit more like home and a little bit less like camping so if you're interested in learning a bunch of tips on how to make your next travel a little bit easier stick around i'm val and this is my husband josh Along with our three cats, Stella, Dylan, and Zoe, we live, work, and travel full-time in our renovated Airstream. Together, we dreamed of a life of our own design, filled with adventure and freedom. So in the summer of 2019, we sold nearly everything we own and hit the road. Life on the road can be hard sometimes, but the opportunities for discovery far outweigh the challenges. Subscribe and join us on this journey as we balance work with play and learn how we can all find a little more adventure in the world around us. We've broken this video down into three sections to make it a little bit more digestible. Locations, resources, and general best practice tips that you can make your next trip a little bit easier. How do we find beautiful locations like this? For us, we rely on a couple of apps, Campendium, The Dirt, and the USFS and BLM apps to really help us find where we can legally camp across the US. Ahead of going somewhere, we will open these apps, search through what it is that we need for us because we are about 30 feet, we have low clearance, and we need to have cell service in order to work. We have to really kind of do a little extra digging to find the best spots for us. Usually what we'll do is look in an area that we're interested in visiting, evaluate whether or not it has good cell service. We can do that both in our Campendium app as well as in other apps such as OpenSignal, which will allow us to check the address of where we're going or the GPS location and validate if there is gonna actually be any cell service there for us. Once we've landed on an area that we're interested in visiting, I'll actually take the GPS coordinates for that and drop it into Google Maps and flip on the satellite view. This will give me a chance to really look first at what the area that I'm entering is going to look like before we even head out. This is a really great thing to do if you're just not comfortable or a little bit unfamiliar with the area. For us, 99% of the time where we're going we've never been before so we don't necessarily know a lot about the turns we might face, the hills we might face, and the overall terrain of the area. So I find that using Google Satellite is really helpful for that just to give me a little sense of can we make it. Another reason I really love to look at the Google Satellite is because it gives me an opportunity to check out what my plan will be to get out if we arrive and there are no campsites available. There have been a number of times that we've shown up at fairly popular boondocking spots where there was nowhere that we could fit and so we had to go to our backup plan. And knowing ahead of time how we were gonna get out of where we were was really important. A lot of times the roads that you are gonna boondock on are gonna dead end and figuring out how to have a backup plan without actually having to back up is gonna be really important. Nobody wants to back up their trailer four or five or six miles on a dirt curvy forest road. So have a plan on how you're gonna get back out. Another reason I love using Google Satellites is it gives me a better idea of what I can expect from the road before I turn down it. Because we have a travel trailer and we don't have another vehicle with us, it can be really hard to scout a road before we turn it, down it. A lot of people will tell you to go and scout the road before you actually go down it with your rig. That is great advice. If you have a tow vehicle, if you have some ability to go down a road without your rig and you're unsure about the road, I highly, highly recommend that you do that. For us, it's just not plausible. We'd have to detach the Airstream. And most of the time we're on a road that we just couldn't leave the Airstream sitting to go scout it. If it's plausible, we will always walk an area before we will go down it if that's available to us. However, sometimes we have to travel four or five or six miles down a road and that's just not an option. That's where having that plan with Google Satellite ahead of time generally helps with a better sense of what our plan's gonna be before we head down a road. One of the best tips that we can give you when you actually arrive to your destination is to take the first spot that you can find that you will fit in and you think will work for your situation. There is nothing worse than thinking you're gonna find a better spot down the road, heading down, not finding one, turning back to go back to that first spot you found and realizing somebody else has come behind you and taken it. Take the spot. You can always scope out and look for other areas later and see if you wanna move. Most of the time we find that once we're in that spot, we're pretty content. We rarely find ourselves wanting to move. 
Occasionally though, that perfect spot comes open and we will move, but it was better that we got our spot originally, got situated, and then moved later on. You always wanna to remember to have realistic expectations of the place that you're going. A lot of times we see these beautiful pictures online of this perfect spot and we get there and there is somebody already in it. It doesn't mean that you're not gonna find another great spot and enjoy it. So have the expectation that the first spot that you went to may not work out for you. Have a plan B. Nothing's worse than showing up somewhere, looking at all the sites, not being able to find one, and not knowing where you're gonna go next. For us, anytime we go anywhere, we always make sure we have a primary destination of where we wanna go and where we'll go as a backup if that place is full. That just ensures that on travel days, we have one less thing to be stressed about and we're ensuring that we're gonna find a spot eventually to stay. when we bought our Airstream to have it fitted out with solar. It was really important to us that we be able to be off grid, boondocking, dry camping, pretty much exclusively. So for us, it was really critical that we set up our rig to meet our daily needs. This is our home, we live in it full time, and it's really important that we be able to go about our daily lives without having to think too much about our energy. So for us, we've opted for 760 watts of solar on the roof that feed four 100 amp hour lithium batteries and go through our 3000 watt inverter. This means that for us, we can work and live without ever having to think about our solar consumption. It's also really important that we have a backup plan. There are gonna be times throughout the year where we might find ourselves with long stretches of rain, clouds, maybe we're parked up in areas that are very forested and we don't have a ton of access to solar. And as a result, we have a small 2000 watt generator that we use solely as a backup to recharge our batteries. Solar might not be the right thing for you. Maybe generator is a better option. It's really important to think about what your consumption needs are before you go out. Take some time to think about what you use on your day to day. If you're starting out or planning to go full time, or maybe you're just looking to get into boondocking more in the weekends, take a look at what your life is like today. It's likely that you're gonna wanna do a lot of the same things you're doing today in your RV. And so it's really think about, do you use a coffee maker, a toaster? Do you use a blender frequently? How often do you have to charge your computers? Those are things that for us, we made a long list and figured out how much we would need on a day to day basis from an energy perspective in order to just get by and not have to think about our energy consumption. There are amazing calculators out there that you can use to calculate how much energy that you need for your system. I'm gonna put links in the description below. I highly recommend that you do this. The more time that you can spend thinking about what your actual energy consumption is going to be, the better off you're gonna be when you actually figure out what your setup is going to look like. A great way to help reduce your energy consumption so that you don't need as much is to think about things that are battery operated. For example, we have a handful of cell phone USB chargers that we can charge and then charge multiple devices off of that. We have found that just keeping those charged every couple days means that we can get multiple charges out of our camera gear, our phones, our iPad, which is really helpful for us because it does help reduce some of the day-to-day -day energy consumption that we're using. Also, a really great trick is to have battery operated lights throughout your RV. For us, we have some motion censored ones in our bathroom. We have a couple in our back office area that we can turn on and off as we desire. These all run off of rechargeable batteries, which means that we don't have to worry about carrying batteries with us or them running out. We have the ability to recharge small AA and D batteries, which is awesome. It means that we too can use less energy and still have everything we need. On that, I'd highly recommend that you get yourself a few battery operated fans as well. There's gonna be days that you're gonna find yourself in 100 degree weather, even if you're chasing the 72 degree days. And having some options that will allow you to cool your rig is gonna be really important. We have a handful of these, as well as our two vent fans in our ceiling. Between those and the windows, we can do a pretty good job to cool our Airstream. We almost never turn on our AC. I think we can count on one hand the number of times we've used our AC in the last year. And that's just the reality of being off grid. We don't run our ACs off our battery. That's an option we've chosen not to upgrade to make that work, but we have yet to really feel the need to have that done. Really great thing to have our solar powered string lights that you can use outside. We have them on our Airstream. We also use them in our tent. It's really helpful to have that resource that will provide light in the evening that is running off solar that you gain throughout the day. It means you don't have to plug into your batteries and use that resource that's so valuable right in your rig itself. 
Next, anytime that you go out, always bring things that need to be charged with you. For us in our truck, we have a number of 110 outlets that we can use and actually charge our computers, our cameras, our phones. I'm sure you have USB ports in your car, if nothing else. Take advantage of that. If you're headed out somewhere, bring your phone, bring your charger, get everything charged that you can, and that will just help you utilize less of your batteries in your RV when you're out and about. If you do rely on solar like we do, we have found that the best thing that you can do is use your high power drying appliances early in the day. Whether that's your instant pot to prep something for your day, charging your computers or phones, the earlier in the day that you can get everything charged up means that the longer throughout the day you're gonna have for your panel to recharge your batteries, which means that you're gonna be the most efficient possible. For us, we try to eliminate charging cell phones or anything overnight where obviously they don't really need eight hours to charge and so we would just be pulling batteries while we were asleep and not paying attention. One of the things that you'll start to learn as you dry camp more is just an awareness of how much you consume and when you consume it. And I don't think that's such a bad thing. Next thing you're gonna to wanna to think about is cooking. For us, because a lot of times we find ourselves in places where there's fire bans, having an option that doesn't include a fire pit is really important for us. When it is really hot outside, the last thing we wanna be doing is cooking inside, turning on our oven, turning on our stovetop. It just creates a lot of heat inside. For us, we've opted for a Blackstone grill that we often cook on outside, as well as an Omnia little stove that we can put right on top of there. I love the Blackstone because it is a cast iron top, which means I can cook anything right on top of it, but I can also put pans directly on top and cook in a saucepan, heat my kettle for my coffee, anything like that. I only need one thing. We've opted for the 17 inch because for you air streamers out there, it fits beautifully into some of the outside compartments, which a lot of the other girls we looked at just didn't do. When we're talking about resources, additional resources we need to think about is our water and our tanks. We're very fortunate that our Airstream has a 54 gallon fresh water tank. That is a lot of water for two people, three cats, and about 30 plants. And while that is a lot of water, there is still time where we use more than that. And so we opted to carry an additional 50 gallons of water in our truck with us. A lot of people will utilize bladder or have large water jugs installed right into the bed of their truck. For us, we love the flexibility of having the jugs. It means that we can carry all 50 gallons of water. We can carry six gallons of water. We can carry one gallon of water, whatever it is that we need. We also can move them around. There've been times where the access to water has been really far from the truck and bladders and installed tanks in your truck require you to be able to access the water directly next to the truck. There have been times where we've had to carry the jugs to the water faucets, get the water we need, and bring them back. And we were really thankful in those moments that we had these individual jugs. Also, it lets us put water out when we are cooking outside and have a water right next to us that we wouldn't be able to do if we only had a bladder or a large tank in the truck. In order to get that water from our jugs into our Airstream, we have opted for a small water pump. This thing was super cheap and really easy. We bought, picked it up at Harbor Freight for less than $40. Highly recommend it. We have found that it has made getting water from the truck into the Airstream super simple. Best part of this one, we opted for the one that connects directly to the batteries. And so we can just hook them right into our battery system, pump the water into the Airstream, and we end up with over 100 gallons of fresh water at any time. Now, that's a lot of fresh water and we don't have 100 gallons of gray and black tanks. We only have about 80. So we have to be conscious of that. We do everything that we can to eliminate how much water goes down into our tank. And that's what takes us into our next section. General best practices and things that you can do to help prolong your time once you're out there and make that experience a little bit easier for you. An opportunity to not send things down the tank can include taking a shower outside. If you're fortunate enough that your rig actually has a shower attached to the outside, like many do, it's a great opportunity to use the water that you have available, but not put it into your tank. For us, because we're often in areas where there are other people kind of around or roads that people can drive past, we've opted for a pop-up tent, which gives us a little bit of extra privacy if we are in areas where there are people who can see us. This one from Amazon has worked out really well for us. It's super easy. It pops up and down pretty simply. I also really love the zip outs on the sides, which allows me to pull the shower head in from the side of the Airstream really smoothly. Also, because we didn't really want to stand in the dirt while we were taking a shower, we found this amazing folding shower mat that we use as well inside. 
Our pop-up tent does come with both a floor and a roof that's optional if you want to add it, but I generally just use the folding mat and leave the top open, which is really nice when you take a shower. Just remember that if you are going to shower outside, it's critical that you only use biodegradable soap and never use anything that could be toxic as it's gonna seep into the ground. If you're not interested in taking showers outside or the weather is not cooperating, one of the things we'd recommend is getting a little folding tub that you can use inside your shower. Most people don't realize that you're gonna use anywhere from half a gallon to two gallons of water just to get your hot water to your shower. That's a lot of water to just throw down into the tank that you didn't really need to. So we'll usually use a little pop-up bucket in our shower and collect that water first. And then when we have hot water, we can just get in and shower. Another thing that we utilize in our shower is an on and off switch on our shower head itself. That helps reduce the amount of water that's going down when we're just standing in there. We can wash our hair, you can shave your legs, you can do any of that stuff without water just running. And when you're ready to rinse, just turn it back on and off you go. Once you're done, you can take that bucket outside and throw it out if you need. For me, I usually use it to water our plants. It's a good use of the water that we have on hand for us to use for what we need. Our next tip is to take that same premise and use it when you're doing your dishes. There is a lot of water that can get wasted when you're doing your dishes. And what we have utilized is a pop-up tub that we put next to our sink. We put all of our dirty dishes into it. We pour some soap in there, get it all sudsed up first, and then we'll rinse them in the sink so that the least amount of water is going down into our tanks as possible. Again, that water can then just be taken outside and thrown out. And we always, always use biodegradable soaps to make sure that we aren't harming the vegetation where we're throwing the water. For most people, when you're gonna go dry camping, you're gonna be pretty remote and maybe pretty far from resources. So it's really important that you bring everything with you that you need, whether that's food, water, medication, just make sure that you have that with you. While there are often small little convenience stores, gas stations, maybe a grocery store that you can pick things up, you're gonna have a much better experience if you're not worried that you don't have something you need and you're trying to find it or that you have to drive an hour or more to locate that. For us, we generally carry anywhere from one to two weeks of food with us because that's generally how long we try to stay out, seven to 14 days before we try to come back into areas and restock up. For most people, RVs are small. For us, it's 180 square feet. We share it with three cats. It's also our office. So for us, we have opted to include an outdoor screen room. These things are amazing in providing extra space. This one's 10 by 10, which means that's 100 extra square feet of space that we get. That's the equivalent of half of our Airstream again. We often will put this out, we'll put our table, our chairs in there. We'll work out of here, we'll eat. It's just a really great resource to expand our living space while still providing maybe some sunshade or a little protection from the bugs. There are a lot of options of these that you can choose from. We've opted for a lightweight, inexpensive run from Coleman. It works great for us. There are high-end ones that you can go to. Just find what works best for you. We've found this to work great. Maybe one day we'll upgrade, but so far we have found that this has been everything that we've needed. Another thing that we always wanna remind people is that we're guests to this land. Whether it's forest land, BLM land, always make sure that we leave it better than we found it. If you arrive at a camp and there is trash or glass or anything like that, it's all of our responsibilities to help clean it up. If we want there to be places for us to boondock, we've gotta make sure that we take care of the land. And unfortunately in the news lately, there's been a lot of conversations about areas being closed for boondocking because the space has been trashed. It's all of our responsibilities, it's all of our jobs. Take it seriously. And our last tip is our most important one, and that's to trust your instincts. If it doesn't feel safe, if it doesn't look safe, or if you're not comfortable, move on. There's always another amazing spot that you can go to, with a beautiful view. There's no reason to put yourself into a position to make yourself feel uncomfortable. Safety is always going to be something that you want to consider in any place that you go. Make sure you have a plan with whomever you're camping with and if you need to move quickly. For us, we make sure that the truck is easily accessible, that we're able to hitch up quickly if we need it. Sometimes things that make you feel unsafe aren't necessarily people. We've had to run from wildfires and it's just important to know that you can get out of a spot pretty quickly. And with that, make sure that you know how to evacuate an area. Sometimes the way that you came in, you may not be able to go out and it's really important to know what other options you have available to you if something were to happen and you need to leave that area don't wait till you're in the moment to have to figure out a plan of how to get out when you're already stressed and you're already rushing the last thing you want to be thinking about is what else you need to do to get out 
At the end of the day, for most of us, the reason that we want to boondock is because we want to be in nature. We want to be away from the chaos and we want to enjoy it. So get out and enjoy it. Make time every day to get out and enjoy the beautiful place that you've camped up. We hope that you liked this video and found these tips super helpful. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Anything I talked about today, I'll have in the description below. And if you're looking for more information, you can check out our blog post all about boondocking. And we hope to see you out on the road sometime. If you ever are in the same area as us, make sure you stop by and say hello.